You're going to be so good. I am. I'm nervous about like pressing the wrong button or something. I don't know why I'm like this. But... Yeah. So we are going to wear headphones, but we'll just have to take turns, right? With as long volume as... up or down. Well, we can just, I mean, I don't know. We're all going to speak, right? Yeah, whatever you want me yeah. to do. So.
We're going to start in just a couple minutes. Um, you are at encouraging authentic communication with AAC users, um, augmentative and alternative communication. That's what AAC stands for. And we'll also be talking about a new program SFUSD is rolling out in a few in a few schools, language systems first. Um, we're just going to wait a couple minutes, give people some time to to come in the the room. In the chat, if you want to just um, type, you know, what your role is and what school you're at, so we get a sense of who is in here, that would be awesome. And you have the the sign in on your on the screen right now. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Um, reminder about how to get paid. And I'll just leave the agenda up there so you know what the plan is. And we'll start, uh, I don't know, like two minutes, we'll, we'll start. Mute people. Awesome. Hang on, I'm not muted, just so you know. Okay, let's get started. Um, so we'll do quick in introductions so you know who we are. Um, and then two through five are what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about an overview of what AAC is, um, why it's important, different functions of, of communication, best practices for implementation for our students using um, AAC devices. And then we'll talk about briefly our new language systems first program. And if you work at any of the schools listed on the bottom there, Paul Revere, Grattan, McCoppin, and McLaren, um, these are the schools that we're starting the program with. So you will be a part of the first rollout. Oh yeah, doing that now. All right, so my name is Nicole Arante. I am an SLP with SFUSD and I'm on the AAC team and I am co-presenting with some of my colleagues. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm also on the AAC team and I'm a speech and language pathologist. And I'm Michaela Sullivan, nice to meet you. And uh, I am Molly Hartzell, I'm an SLP also. Okay. Not same thing. There we go. Let's 
So augmentative, augmentative and alternative communication, AAC, is any means of communication other than verbal speech or sign language. Um, and it, it does fall under the umbrella of, of assistive technology. It can be unaided or aided. So unaided meaning you're just using your body, um, facial expressions, body language, and or aided, meaning you're using some sort of tool. It could be a pen and paper, could be um, your phone when you're texting, and it could be um, our students who are using AAC devices. We are all multimodal communicators. We all use different forms of communication every day. So here are some examples. How do we communicate? Facial expressions, gestures, including um, proxemics. Like if you have a student who expresses that they want something or they wanna show you something by taking your hand and leading you over. Vocalizations, signs, proximity, Talk about the eye gaze, words, and AAC. It's also important to think about all of the reasons we do communicate. Commenting, requesting, joking, providing information, answering questions, asking questions, refusing, protesting, agreeing disagreeing, sharing feelings, and building relationships to, to feel closer to others. And I think it's important to sort of having that mind frame about all the reasons that we do communicate, because I think oftentimes, myself included, when we're, when we're working with our students, and especially if they're just starting out using AAC, we, we, um, we kind of zero in on like the requesting. Um, and, and we sort of sometimes aren't thinking about all the other reasons why people communicate and that it's just as important to, to teach those communication functions. This is a quote by Gail Porter. I'm just gonna read it because I think it's powerful and, and important. The goal of AAC, the goal of giving our students these devices is communication autonomy. It's being able to say what I wanna say to whoever I wanna say it, whenever I wanna say it, however I wanna say it. And so how do we help get our AAC users there? These are some of the things we'll be talking about today. Accessing a robust AAC system, aided language simulation, modeling, honoring all types of communication. How do we get buy-in to use the device? Focusing on connection and um, not on, com on compliance. And we'll talk more about these things. Prompting versus encouraging communication and thinking about um, language development for students who are using mouth words or speaking orally. Okay, Jamie, do you wanna? Sure. Hi, um, it's good to see some familiar faces. And um, so the first, one of the first important things we'll talk about um, to get our AAC users to be autonomous communicators is we really need them to have access to a robust AAC system. Um, and robust is one of those words that gets thrown around, but it's another word would be maybe comprehensive or um, just having lots and lots of vocabulary. So a non-robust system would be maybe a core board with um, eight words, which just isn't robust enough. So having a robust AAC system with you know up to sometimes thousands of words really supports um, all those communication functions and things that um, Nicole was just talking about. So making and keeping friends, you might need vocabulary, um, a lot of social vocabulary, um, a lot of question words, asking and answering questions. Obviously, it's going to need question words. Um, how are you? And how are things going? And then the words to answer those questions. Um, refusing and rejecting are really important. So a robust AAC system would have lots of ways to say that. No thanks, don't want, stop, and no, um, don't like it. Um, sharing personal narratives is important. So we that would um, be a robust system that also might have some personal vocabulary that's been customized. And we'll talk more about that one too stating feelings. We don't want just happy, sad, and mad. Um, some of these 
I work a lot with preschoolers. Some of these kids will really surprise you and they'll see that little face that's frustrated and say they're frustrated. And it's usually pretty accurate. Um, making real choices. Um, what do you want to see at the zoo? We want to have lots and lots of animals. I went, took my students to the zoo at the end of the year and one of the students said gopher, which was really <laughs> cool. I didn't expect it. And she really did want to see the groundhogs. Um, learning new vocabulary as it occurs. So maybe you're um, reading a new book, you want to make sure you have a picture of um, lots and lots of animals so that if an anteater is in the book, you can teach that as it comes along, joining in the community and self-advocating. So those are all really important things we want our communicators to be able to do. And we want to make sure they have the vocabulary to do it. And then also access to a robust AAC system mirrors more of what we do when we talk to kids for natural speech development, we really don't limit what we say, you know, even with babies, we're using all kinds of words. So we want to mirror natural speech development as far as the input we provide as much as we can. And when we're modeling on a device with robust vocabulary, we can do that. Um, and then also presuming potential and increasing opportunity. We want to, um, going back to the ground, that little student is, you know, she's not speaking. She doesn't show us she knows that much that much of the time but she um because the photo was on there she found it she touched it we went there we looked at the groundhog she had a great time so it increased her opportunity to see something she really loved okay um this slide just says what happened to peck so you know pex is still around i'm from delaware where pex is from um pex is the picture exchange communication system um, some of you guys probably have heard of it. Um, sometimes when people say PECS, they actually mean the just the picture. Um, but PECS, P-E-C-S, is a system of exchanging one picture to request something. Um, and, you know, it has a role of teaching initiation to some kids, but um, it's kind of less used in our district now because of the limitations. So it's not as robust. Um, it's really hard for modeling. Um, the student might not have access to all the words they want to say. So maybe it has a picture of crackers and they like crackers, but it doesn't have a picture of um, hungry or um, mad because there's no crackers. Um, difficult to model language dynamically. So we might be able to say you want a cracker, but then there's no crackers available. We don't have the words on there to say, sorry, no crackers. Let's look for something different. Um, and it also limits language, access to language it's a hierarchy. So according to PEX, you have to master one level before going to the next, which is doesn't really mirror the way we teach kids language. Um, and then initiation is super important and it is a challenge for a lot of our students, especially our autistic students, but we can teach that um, using other AAC systems as well. Um, I'll do one more and then hand back. So this is a very important part of the presentation and something you'll hear from your speech language pathologist kind of over and over is aided language stimulation. And another word for that is modeling. So um, there's just a little definition here. It's research-based, um, but basically you want to um, provide input for kids and any learner in the, um, using the mode that they're gonna express themselves. So when we talk to kids who can use their mouths and oral speech to communicate effectively, we talk to them, they hear it, they can speak. So if we think about giving that input to the kids we want to learn to use AAC, it's input on their system or on a, another system that looks just like it. So um, what it is, is talking to your partner, um, you're speaking and you're simultaneously touching a word on the device. Um, that something they're expressing or that you are expressing. And you don't have to find every word. So if you are, um, you might wanna start modeling just one to two words beyond the level they're communicating. But again, we don't know what they're thinking. So um, this, is a, this is a big one that kind of takes a long time to learn how to do well, but just knowing this principle is really important. And um, Nicole's gonna, <laughs> she has her <laughs> iPad in hand. So let's see, can you guys um, see that? There's a little yes, I will make we'll do more of this yes. later and we'll make it bigger. But just to in case some of you are not familiar with this at all, just to sort of give you a, an example, if it's time to, um, I don't know, like go outside for recess, you can use your voice and say that, OK, it's time to go outside. And then as you're saying that, you would say, OK, it's time go to go. 
outside. Outside. And then depending, you can, if you're comfortable, you can add more. It's time to go outside and play. play. Let's go. Go outside, play. And um, thank you, Nicole. <laughs> so one thing that also that you'll, um, people will say a lot, and I remember thinking this a whole lot too, is, oh, they, my student understands go outside. Why do I need to show them on the, on their device? They already know what going outside means, but we want them, it's really important for other reasons. We want them to know where the words are so they can say it themselves, um, where the word is, and also just that other people are using AAC. Um, so it's just a, that they're learning. It's a, a good way to communicate. Um, and then, um, as Nicole did, you don't have to touch every picture, as you say, a sentence, but as the student, you know, gains more language, you will use more, you know, model longer sentences. Okay. So this next one, modeling without expectation is, um, sorry, I shouldn't say excuse the typo. And you, oh, there is a typo in this video. That you, <laughs> it says expectation. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, so this is a video we got online. We didn't make it, but um, you don't, when we talk to kids, we don't always expect they're going to say something. So if we model, um, let's go, it's okay if the student does not use their device to say, let's go. If we model stop, you want, you know, you're saying stop. We don't expect the student to always touch that because that's not um, how we teach kids to communicate. And modeling with that expectation also relieves a lot of pressure on the student to feel like, okay, they can just talk to me on my device without me always having to do something. So this um, short video is about that. Modeling without expectation. Modeling without expectation means using your learner's AAC to talk without expecting them to use it in that moment. When we model, we use our learner's AAC to talk to and around them for real reasons within authentic interactions. No expectation means that we're not asking questions, prompting our learner to imitate, or trying to get them to say anything in particular. It does not mean that we don't expect to have an interaction with our learner. We wanna connect and truly enjoy something together. Remember, even if they're not using their AAC yet, our learners are communicating. Look for facial expressions, body movements, or gestures. Respond to that communication. It's all about connecting authentically with your learner and modeling AAC while you do. Sounds good, but what does that look like? It looks like talking about the things you do every day. P you, those are some stinky feet. <laughs> Stinky feet. Wash feet. We've got to wash those feet. Talking about the things you enjoy together. Ha <laughs> ha, the show. <laughs> you can't stop laughing. I think it's funny. Noticing what your learner is already communicating and using AAC to talk more about it. Wow, I see you smiling. Maybe you're thinking. It's fun. It is fun. Maybe you'd like to do it again. Let's go. Talking, even when it doesn't seem like your learner's paying attention. Looks like you're having fun. Those cars are cool. I like it. Cool talking to the whole family using AAC. Yum, this is so good. It, great. Happy, like. Thanks, I'm so happy you like it. Talking with AAC across the whole day. Morning. Good morning. It's time to get up. Get up. Noon. Um, Hungry. And night. What a great book. Read another. Let's read another one. Modeling without expectation means making AAC another language spoken in your home. One last tip. 
if your learner does say something with their AAC, make sure you respond. Continue the conversation by using AAC to say something back. Try to make a connection to whatever's happening in the moment. If you really don't understand, it's okay to tell them that. Just don't bombard them with questions to try and figure it out. It's too much pressure. Plus, you run the risk of making their experience with AAC feel stressful. We want them feeling really positive about it. So um, we were thinking of maybe opening, you know, taking a little pause and just seeing what, if anyone had any ideas about that video, if there's anything different than maybe what they had heard or been doing before. If you don't want to say anything, that's totally fine too. Oh, Grace. Go ahead, Grace. Yes. Hi. Thank you for that slide. Um, so a lot of times only the, the student might have that a tool. I usually don't have that tool. So I would just borrow their, you know, theirs and try to communicate that way and then give it back to them and then they communicate with me. So is it important for me as um, an educator to have my own, um, that tablet to use? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, cause I work with special ed kids and um, then I can bring it to different sites or even within the same school. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, it's an excellent question. And it's something that um, we're all advocating for every year to get more devices for staff. Um, so yes, like if you don't have your own, using the students is okay, as long as it's okay with the student, but some students don't like that at all. And so then um, some brainstorming needs to happen. Like you can, some ideas are using the low tech version, right? Like printing out low tech, um, the, the homepage of the app so that you can at least model the pathway. Um, another option could be if you have access to an iPad, you could download the, a lot of the apps have a free or at least a very cheap version. And usually the only feature that it doesn't have is the voice output, which is not a huge deal because you can just be the voice output. So like you can model and say the word with your voice. Um, but it is an issue and I'm glad you brought it up because many, many teachers and educators are, are having this, this program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could also, um, if are you someone who travels from classroom to classroom? Grace? If you're, you know, you can always see if the teacher in that classroom does happen to have an extra, some special teachers will have an iPad in the classroom, all the pre-K pre SDCs have them, so you could always ask to use the classroom iPad for modeling too, but yeah, it would be nice if we all had a little more resources and we're working mm -hmm. on it, and that's actually part of the presentation at the end, we'll talk about certain classrooms starting this year, and mm -hmm. hopefully it'll expand, are gonna, everyone will have an iPad. I think it would also be helpful to hear more from educators um, express this. And like, I think it might be helpful. We'll put our emails at the end, but like if you could email our, our team email, like saying that, cause then we can use, use that um, like data to kind of bring to our Numbers. meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just saying like, look at all of these educators who are asking for this because yeah. they're trying to help their students. Oh, thanks. In the chat, um, someone said, if anybody has Metro PCS and have an account, they have tablets for $35. I don't know if they have what apps they have on them, but something is better than nothing. So yeah, even if um, it's not the same exact app, I think that's definitely a good resource. Anything okay. Else come up in the chat. Um, does, did anything in that video seem different I know when like when I started here it seemed like AAC there was a lot about prompting a lot about if I am using AAC if the student has AAC anytime I talk to them I expect them to respond and I don't know that the approach seems to be a little different now and I, I know from my own work with kids it does seem that if you do this modeling it it actually works and the kids feel I think there's less pressure you know if you felt like someone was expecting you to do something that you weren't quite ready to do you might push it away or kind of turn away. And you do see that sometimes with kids when they, um, I think when it's mostly when they feel that pressure, like I have to respond. So it's kind of a important 
concept that can be really helpful for the kids. Are there any other questions about that video? Okay. Did your grade have something she wanted to follow up on? She said she got booted out. Oh. oh. Well, yeah. Um, back. Question. Okay. Just 40. Okay. There's also another question from Ashley. Uh huh. She said, what is the best way to model for a student who uses eye gaze? Still by touching icons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That yeah. would be the best way. And speaking. Same way. Mm -hmm. Right. Same way you'd model way. as a direct selector. Mm -hmm. But we have like our, our resident expert eye gaze SLP over here, Michaela. Yeah, Michaela. <laughs> that's funny, but no, that's a great question. Um, uh, tell us about your student who uses eye gaze. We'd love to hear. You can chat too. I know not everybody likes to, Hi. to talk. Uh, <laughs> um, he uses that eye gaze. Like, um, Actually. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's like the unique system um but so he uses his eyes to select an icon um but you know when i'm when we model like we'll use our fingers you know to press the icon um but there's no other like models around him that are using his eyes their mm -hmm. eyes or anything to kind of get that buy-in so i was just wondering if there was any like best strategies for that is there like good language to use to prompt yeah. them you know looking, looking at eyes this. yeah so, you know i can tell well, look, look at, I see that you're looking, your eyes are looking at, you know, whatever word, you know, and I use my eyes, but I also touch. So, um, you know, um, so just acknowledge that the way you're modeling is different than the way he or she accesses. Um, but, you know, that's, that's great. Um, is it okay? Sometimes I'll say, is it okay if I use your talker? Or I say, can I have a turn? You know, um, and you know, some people say no. You know, and some people say say yes. But it's good. It's, it shows the respect and everything. But that was a really good um, good thing to bring up um, about the different ways mm -hmm. um, you know that we access. We have another question that says the video is showing the adult holding the AAC device. So when does the child hold it? Yeah, I think I'm. I think that kind of goes back to Grace's question of like, maybe they, you know, is this just a video, but they, but that's real life too. Sometimes you only have one device. And so I think the right thing to do in that situation is the adults modeling. And then you can kind of not in a, um, in like a forceful way, but just sort of offer it to the child to see if they want to say anything back and kind of give a little bit of wait time. Um, but really, like we were talking about the modeling without expectation. So in those moments, it's about giving that input and showing the child how to speak that language. And then you can yeah, always offer it to see if they want to say anything. And then another thing, um, when you're doing the modeling without expectation, you if you're talking, you could say your name. I, you know, so-and-so says, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then if somebody else says it, oh, so, you know, so that just acknowledge who's talking um, for, for the students, um, you know, um, and then say, okay, you know, um, but we don't have any expectation, but mm -hmm. just, just down the road, you know, um, sometimes that's helpful when we mm -hmm. say what we would say. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to acknowledge there are some kids who will who do not want you holding mm -hmm. and touching their device. And that right. and if that yeah, is yeah, and, and if that is one of your students, that would be a really uh, great reason to reach out to our team and to, so that we can help you troubleshoot yeah. or see if we can we can get you something to use. Mm -hmm. um, we have a raised hand. Yeah, Miss Juliet, go ahead. Hi. <clears throat> Um, so I actually work with um, Ashley, and this is kind of a follow up with um, what she's asking. So for buy in for this particular student who's sort of been resistant to using their device, we've tried to find um, videos to show him other students using um, eye gaze to kind of um, show him that th this is the possibilities or the capabilities he will, um, you know, 
he's able to have if he, you know, buys into using his device to communicate. Um, and um, but finding those videos is really challenging. And I was wondering, do you guys have any insight or um, any suggestions for where we could look um, for a YouTube video or something or one of, you know, the platforms that have, you know, have eye gaze to be able to to show this student what it, you know, what it looks like? We could look them up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would wonder, say on the PRC Saltillo. Yeah, I wondered, Michaela, do you have any current students that you could video? Bring over? Yeah, oh, yeah I could. We yeah. can crowdsource some from the yeah. district if there are other students who are using iGaze. It really, I don't, we, I don't have a bank. Yeah, that would be because that was one of this we thought like an uh, older student, um, but we don't, just don't have anybody on our site that uses eye gaze. Um, mm -hmm. Just thinking that that might that might be the key. <laughs> so yeah, any help would be so appreciated. As far Thank as you. he uses an actual device, um, or does he use? He uses a, a device like a salt. A a like PRC a device or yeah, he has a he has um gosh now I'm zoning out on which ones he has. Um but I didn't use this PRC. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. Great <laughs> suggestion from Kimberly Anderson said the bridge school on YouTube might have Oh some. yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Okay. Yeah, I if I can jump in, I she's not she's not a child anymore. She's a young adult, but she um interviewed Eddie Vetter and she uses the eye gaze to access uh, her device. It's really cool. Cool. Veracore. But look up um, Bridge School Eddie Vetter interview. There's one example there. Awesome. Oh, Thank you so much. Yeah. I will. And, oh, sorry. Um, there are a couple of games um, on the PRC Saltillo. Um, there's Whack-A-Mole. Does he ever play that game? Not yet. He hasn't yet quite got there. <laughs> and then we could unlock his device for $15. Oh, right. I'd be happy to pay for it. Um, <laughs> And um, we could uh, open up like Netflix or YouTube, and he could actually use eye gaze to operate, turning the music on and off. And that, um, that would be cool. He's a big YouTube guy. Yeah. And you could also program music on the button. Um, so we could do that and make it more. Um, so we could help you with that. You should fill out. You should fill out the AAC support um, request. You know, and someone could come out there. And by someone, I mean probably yeah, Michaela. Like, <laughs> the SLPs are pull it out though. So yeah, but somebody asked, yeah. "What is eye gaze?" Mm -hmm. And eye gaze is an access method. It's called indirect direct access. So the device, the the computer um, device, actually has a module at the bottom where it actually reads the retinal movement. And uh, the person has to do the, uh, their eyes need, it needs to be calibrated to their eye movements. And so somebody else can't you go on that device and, you know, and use it um, well. But so it's calibrated to their um, eye gaze, eye gaze or their, how their eyes move. Um, and it often has to be recalibrated some students who use eye gaze and they're less apt to use it. It could be that um, it's not working well and it needs to be recalibrated and they're frustrated mm -hmm. um, because they, they can't, you know, um, get to what they want. Mm -hmm. So that that could be a reason because I've had kids just like put their heads head down and just give up because they just didn't. They just couldn't do it. I also recommend it like if one of us comes out there or like a. Um, calibrating it to your eyes for for a little bit so you can try it and see how hard and tiring it is um it really is because that it's a muscle like anything else and I think mm -hmm. it takes a long time sometimes to like build up that strength the other suggestion I have is um on the newer models of touch chat they have something called head pointing mm -hmm. it could be construed as eye gaze to some people so so that the student wouldn't feel so different from everybody okay. else. Mm -hmm. One of the peers could use head pointing mm -hmm. and say, okay, um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, there are lots of ways to use this. Now look at what we, you know, mm -hmm. we can do it, Nicole. 
you're going to show oh no i was just going to hold it up just so you, if you oh i can't see myself so i, I can't continue. see um Spotlight. we can if anyone's interested we at the end maybe we can show you because i don't want to take up too much much time but it's just in any touch chat if you have touch chat you can go into settings and and put the that the head scanning feature on head tracking yeah and so um, the head tracking no, now it's oh, they updated. Yeah, oh my gosh, we can okay, show them this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to see that, would anyone like to see that? If you do, you can hang around at the yeah. end, and we'll and we'll show you. Um, anything else, or should we keep? We have another question. Them? Just one more question. Uh, suppose if the student has a behavior issue in using the device, how do we de-escalate in order for them to use the device? It's going to depend on the the student and where they are in their communication and where they are in learning to use the device and, and what we think they're trying to communicate. Um, Can you give us an example? Yeah. This is very common, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Feel free to, to talk or type in the chat too. Um, yeah, I mean, if you are using the, the, the you know, the tablet and then they're, they're kind of looking at you and trying to, and then later they would just push out the tablet and, and kind of communicate it in the way that they prefer to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like you have it with the special ed classes where students are not, they have short attention span. And um, if you try to use it, I mean, sometimes they can use it and use it well. Sometimes they just refuse to use that at all. And mm -hmm. yet you are as a, a, an educator to need to uh, understand where they're coming from and maybe, mm -hmm. okay, maybe let's go take a walk and then come back and figure things out. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and so, I find that a bit of a challenge when, when let's say I, okay, I reach over to use it uh, and they're fine for me using their tablet, but when it's their turn to respond, they don't want to respond or they, they want to communicate in the way they've known to communicate it. Because I think um, sometimes the tablets are not sent home with them to be used at home uh, with their family. So I'm not sure how they communicate with their family. So sometimes when they come to school, they prefer to, communicate it in the way that they're mm -hmm. used to with their families so. at home. Yeah. It's a good segue. Yeah, yeah you just fine. like, it's just, um, just said everything we needed to hear for the next slide. Yeah. Oh, so okay. That, okay. <laughs> no, because that's super common and no one should have to communicate with AAC or in any way, really. That's what we wanted to, you know, communicate with this slide is honor all types of communication. Um, so if that student's being clear, they needed a break or they don't want to do something. You could do some modeling like, oh, you're saying stop or don't, but we never want to push them to use AAC. Um, and that's just one tool. And if you understood that they really wanted something, um, we don't want to make sure they also say it with AAC. So if they're showing that they want to go outside and take a break, we don't want to put the device in their face and say, mm -hmm. you know, tell me, what do you want? Or mm -hmm. tell me, press the button or anything like that. Cause that, that will also be kind of detrimental and make them not want to use the AAC device. So um, just respond. If you understand what they're communicating, that's awesome. Um, if you can validate it, that's even better. Mm -hmm. If you can model, that's great. Um, I think sometimes it's okay to wait and wait yeah if they're really upset and you know mm -hmm. what they want like just do it and then when things are calmed back yeah. down you can come back and say hey I like you did this and I knew that's what you wanted like let me model how to do it on the mm -hmm. device you know and and, the, and they might the next time it might be the same thing but maybe 80 times later mm -hmm. they'll do it on the the device instead of another type of communication Jamie you've had an experience where um, older students have actually with behavior challenges have actually turned to the device to help them calm down, right? Yeah. At, in the middle school that you, yeah. Um, so, you know, sometimes it, you know, once they get familiar enough, they feel like when they're in a bad place, they can actually, it actually helps them. But sometimes it do, it's not, and you don't want to force anything, right? Yeah, and just it's it's really there really isn't any superior way to communicate as long as it's clear. So mm -hmm. if you understood, if they're pointing at the door, if they're going to the door and looking right at you, um, those that's fine. You know, we always want words, but we don't have to have words. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard sometimes, especially for speech therapists. We're like, mm -hmm. we want to hear some words, but it's okay. It's okay as long as we're getting their message.
Does that answer your question? Hey, Helen, we see your question. We're going to go through the next few slides and then we'll go back to some oh, questions, okay. okay? Okay. Did we skip a slide? I think, um, no. Okay. This is the next one, yeah. Do you want to do one? And um, yeah, sure. Okay. So number five, when you first when you first meet your students, can connection, not compliance. Um, so I, I think we we all come with the, the best intentions and all of us, myself included, will can will still be guilty of this sometimes. But you, you know, you're in the school and you're you're teaching a lesson or you're teaching a skill and you ask questions and you want and you want them to to answer, you know. Um there's a time and a place for that, but um most importantly, these we're talking about AAC, we want to use this, the AAC devices as a way to more deeply connect with our students and and know what they're thinking and communicate with them. Um, and so if that can be the focus always, but like especially at the beginning of the year when you're when you're still building rapport and and you and you don't know this person yet, um, these are some ideas for for what to focus on. Check in with people who know the student well so that you can kind of get a sense of their their preferences, what they don't like, um, their personality, um, how they learn best, um, ask for trainings, reach out to us. We'll make sure you have all of our, our um, information. Reach out to your SLP, of course. Um, make it fun. Yeah, make mm -hmm. it fun. Customize the, the device. There, there's core vocabulary is very important, but um, so, customization sometimes is is mm -hmm. extremely important for for certain kids I think we have a video oh, okay um this is just a cute video <laughs> <laughs> this is a little preschooler so a lot of preschoolers are using aac pretty good at it. oh no uh oh we might have a little technical difficulty it's very cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might not work. Um, well, that stinks. All right, we might have to skip the cute video. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, this slide is about prompting versus encouraging communication and um. So I think some of the kids you might see who are pushing away their devices might possibly have been prompted a lot. And that is where that kind of pressure can come of, you know, you have to tell us something with your device. So um, some of the things that kind of go along with prompting is if we're prompting someone to say a certain thing with their AAC device or, or with their mouth words or anything is we're assuming we know what they want to say. So you know, it could be, um, for example, the student with the gopher, when we were, we were near the, the lion, we were near the giraffes. And so it could be that she was looking at a giraffe and I could have gone to the animals and um, prompted for her to say giraffe because it she's looking at the giraffe, thinks she's smiling, but um, that would imply that I knew what she was thinking. And so, you know, sometimes we know what kids are thinking, sometimes we're wrong, um, but we want to avoid assuming that we know what people are thinking as much as we can. Um, and that's what prompting does imply. Um, you know, telling someone to say thank you. We tell kids to say thank you all the time. You know, sometimes it's mm -hmm. fine, but you know, sometimes they're really not thinking thank you. They're thinking, <laughs> I hate this presence <laughs> or something like that. So, because um, the goal that Nicole had mentioned earlier of autonomy is to say what I want, who I want, whatever I want, however I want. Um, prompting isn't really allowing people to do that. and. In my personal opinion, some of the kids we work with have less autonomy over their lives in general. So to give them as much of that as we can is um, just a way to respect them. And then modeling is so so highly successful that if we model and model and model, it really serves the purpose of what used to be a little more prompting. So if we keep modeling, the kids are gonna they're gonna learn. And then um, focusing on conversation, this to me is super important. Um, instead of prompting, just talk, make it fun, like Michaela said earlier. So 
Um, if you're at lunch or snack, instead of, you know, I want cracker, I want juice more, you could um, just have a conversation like, Ooh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Or um, you don't have to prompt them to say yummy. You can say yummy. You can model yummy. I guarantee us some of your students will say yummy because it's a fun word. Um, talk about, you know, talk about the kids sitting at the table. Oh, look there, you know, maybe they're really social kids. There's Nicole. Oh, Nicole has apple juice. So mm -hmm. to focus on that kind of um, conversation is not prompting them to say anything. Um, but if they want to say mm -hmm. that they might, and then, um, I don't know, I was gonna, like Jamie okay. said, you know, we don't know what they're saying, but if, if they're making an obvious face or you know this kid really well and and like you feel fairly confident, I think it's okay to say, I see like I you're smiling. I I think oh, yeah. you're feeling this. This way, you know, you're not you're not like saying it, but you're you're telling them why you think that and mm -hmm. giving them language to comment on mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Totally. I think that's okay. Yeah. And that's following mm -hmm. their lead. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually and that's meaningful mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's where it's like modeling versus prompting. So if I see um, you know, this student is reaching for juice, I might model, oh, juice, you know, you want some juice. So, but I'm not I just I'm not gonna make them, you know, make them feel like they have to say it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you are following their lead and modeling a word that you think they are trying to say. Do something interesting. It's, you know, for the kids who um, might not be using the device, because we might say, say you're playing with cars on a ramp and you're modeling go or you're modeling the colors. Um, and they're just not, they're not, you know, we want to, we want them to label the colors or mm -hmm. say go or say car. If you do something interesting, maybe like, um, oh, my car. Oh, no. And have it flip yeah. over and model. Oh, no on the device or something like that that might encourage them to communicate if they think it's funny mm -hmm. um versus prompting them to say what we want them to say which is go car or colors um and then supporting attention um and we can encourage communication by doing all these things following their lead and um the pictures themselves sometimes really will help the kids attend so if it's the car activity and a student really is into colors and I start modeling the colors because I know that student loves colors that might make them attend more to the cars. Um, and yeah, and the last one is um, really just when we really don't know what they're saying, that's a good time to use it. They say like, are you talking about, mm -hmm. or are you thinking about something to eat? Are you thinking about your mom? Mm -hmm. I think you feel sad. I'm not sure what mm -hmm. you want to, you know, is it a toy? That's a, a good time to do some kind of open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other thing I was going to add is, is like, if you're, if you're doing something uh, more academic, you know, like reading a story or something and you're, and you're asking a, a question about the story, um, that can be kind of tricky, right? Because like there, there is a correct answer or a couple correct answers, and you, 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 sometimes you need to, to to prompt. And I think in that situation, you know, you ask the question and you give the wait time and 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 see what what your student comes up with. And if there if there's n nothing, um, or they say something completely off topic, I think um, maybe something you could do is is model a couple of different answers um, that are correct um if that's possible with the question you're asking and then encourage them to 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 yeah do their best to choose it to I like that to mm -hmm. to come up with that sort of answer um or you can scroll through choices and yeah. see what elicits a response. Yes. Like if you're reading a book, oh, go do you back. think it was fast? Do you think it was slow? Do you think it was big? Mm -hmm. And if maybe they open their eyes really big when they hear one of the words, oh, you think maybe mm -hmm. it was big, mm -hmm. you know? Or you can so. go back to the story and show some different pictures and whatever picture they seem to attend to the most, you can then sort of help support. So, you know, sometimes in the academic setting that you're, you're, you have to do some level of, of, of prompting but um I just wanted to yeah to do that setting that makes much sense too and I think also just really looking at the developmental level of mm -hmm. your student because if it's a three-year-old at snack and they would rather say car than cracker because they're thinking about a car outside that's really different than a middle schooler who we want to answer yeah. a you know a wh question mm -hmm. about a story mm -hmm. um and just to really look at your at your students. And I know you need data too. So like, of course, like if you're trying to see what they're understanding, then you you know you could ask the questions without giving any prompting and and 
and see what happens. But if you're in the teach mode, I think that's what I, that, mm -hmm. that's something you can do is, is provide a couple of different answers that could be correct and encourage them to formulate that, that response that they like the best. And then also with the robust vocabulary, it's easier to kind of supply a multiple choice. So, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a story about um, animals. emotions or animals, oh, you know, you might ask the question, how did he feel for emotions? And then go to that help. Let's go to the feelings page. And then that's a great way to, you know, prompt, kind of, you know, it's a prompt. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it's a yeah, teaching prompt. Use the device. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, teaching. Navigation. and we'll we'll talk about this um, in a little bit too. But if you have a student who, whenever you're doing that sort of activity, like like we'll just use Jamie's example, how do they feel? And you go to that page and they push the device away. That would be a sign to me that there was never um, a good period of time where that device was used with that student to connect. Mm -hmm. That that would make me think like that student has a kind of like a work relationship with that device. And then mm -hmm. I would want to take a step back and sort of repair that and be like, okay, you know what, we are just going to use the communication device as your voice. Like it will always be available so that you can use it during academics, but like, we're going to really focus on using it as connection. And if we need AAC for, to help you participate in curriculum, maybe you can use low tech or um, multiple choice or um, yeah. to kind of repair that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're spending so much time on this one. There's just one more point is that I've noticed sometimes when kids get AAC, teachers get really excited and because they, the student may, might not have said the name of a single animal or color and now they're able to. So you will sometimes see um, some people, parents especially want to do some testing and no one wants to be tested on their AAC device. And we don't like kids don't like to be tested period. So if you know, they know what red is and you're holding up an apple, what color? That's kind of a testing question. Um, you know, maybe the student likes to do that, but to try to avoid that because um, yeah, then as device get associated with work only. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I had a question. I think we might have gone over a lot of this. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, sorry. It's okay. I'm just wanting to know, um, you know, sometimes it's good to know the, the student's IEP, for example, but um, as part of the teaching, I, my experience in the past, um, I only, they're, they're not allowed because it's confidential. Um, sometimes they don't want, they don't, I can't get access to that information. But the point for me wanting to know is not to be nosy, but it's really to help me figure out how to work with the kid more effectively. And um, I think uh, the, the specialist, um, uh, at the site at this one school, for example, um, she says, I'm sorry, but you can't, uh, we can't disclose that to you, but, but that's helpful. I'm not going to, you know, tell anybody else. It's just information for me to know how better we work with the kid, but I'm just wondering how you would work around that, how that, um, if, if it's all, everyone on the teaching team gets to know that and only specific people get to know the IEP of the student because then it'll, it, 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 in terms of effective uh, yeah. response, you know, or, or, or help to that student um, can be a little bit more meaningful if um, more than one or two people um, know about it. And, and again, like I said, it's not for being nosy, it's just to know better how to help the child. Yeah, I don't know what your role is, but I've definitely worked on teams where everybody knows what the IEP goals are, mm -hmm. like for right. sure, yeah. What is your role? Sorry, um, my role is um, a para. Yeah, yeah, you should. You might not have, some teachers might not give you a copy of the IEP, but usually, you know, they're kind of like a bullet point. These are the goals, um, yeah. some strategies. I don't know, maybe if you're floating around to a lot of different schools, it might yeah. be. But um, yeah, maybe ask the teachers for a summary of their goals if they don't want to give you the actual IEP mm -hmm. yeah. to look at. You can always ask for the IEP at a glance. Uh, yeah, IEP it's like a, usually mm -hmm. a, just a couple pages. Yeah, so okay. like Catherine at the box at, I, at, the glance, at a glance. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, okay, yeah, are we great. Good You're so good. interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of paras here today. Thanks, all the paras, for coming. Um. I'm just going to do a quick time check. Yeah. I want to make sure we get into, okay, two or nine. So let's just maybe. We kind of went over this. Yeah. We, um, 
Mm-hmm. I think um, we'll just b- briefly touch on this hand over hand physical prompting, I feel like is something that um, we used to do a lot more. And now um, we're learning that it's not the best way to prompt our AAC users. Um, the best thing to do is is, mo- is modeling, like, like we keep talking about. Um, hand over hand physical prompting can feel in, a little bit invasive um, and it affects like the student's motor planning because um, they're not doing it by themselves. And it, it's it's just sort of like Jamie was talking about earlier, it, it's kind of like assuming you know what they wanna say. Mm-hmm. Um, I would just say so. one little time, sometime I've had a few students where if they just have really big problems initiating motor wise to kind of give them like a little elbow, like just kind of push their elbow towards the device that can sometimes be helpful if they, if it looks like they want, want to mm-hmm. use it. But I think a lot of that comes from like, we're educators and we want to help them and like, they're not doing yeah. it. And so you like, it just feels like that's what you should do. But just yeah. remember that modeling is is yeah. super important and effective and you're doing a lot by just modeling. Yeah. Um, we kind of already talked about this. Yeah. This bit. slide is yeah. the aided language modeling we were talking about. Oh, oh. it's important to to touch on there are no prerequisites for AAC anybody can use AAC there are no skills you need to have everybody should have access to language yeah even if it takes years even if someone hasn't responded using their AAC for a long time doesn't mean they won't use it see if this one works Uh, and I'm sorry well Bob do you Love. Love. Um, Sorry, it's so yeah. Tricky. Maybe we should. Does it? Um. Yeah, the, I mean, we've we've touched on this. I just just to reiterate, if you see a student use their device for something one day, and you know you're really excited about it, but then the next day they don't do it, and 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 you're prompting them, and they won't do it it's okay. Like just because they've done it once, it doesn't mean they're going to do it again the next day. And it doesn't mean that they're never going to do it again. There's uh, so many reasons why they may not do it that next day. And to just, just remember that and be okay with that. And just take a deep breath and know that it'll, (laughs) they'll, they'll do it again. Um, okay. We're not going to do this right now, but, um, just to give you a, a quick, idea of what modeling could look like. I'm just going to let you look at this. I'm not going to read these, but um, the, what's in red is what you what you might say to the student. And then what's cap in all caps is what you could actually model. Do you want to do one? Yeah, I can do one to show you. So like this first one, you're reading a book together. You can say verbally with your mouth, I like this book, but then you may only model I like wow. Um, and it's easier to just model reading. reading there because that's what comes up on the screen. So you could, I like reading or book. book. If you have a student, I'm going to come back to this, hang on, but it's important to, you're going to want to model at about a student's level or one word up. So if your student is really only using their device for one word, then I'm going to do one word or two words. So I might just say like, like. reading, Read. I like reading. Or you can even on touch chat anyway, you can head into the the book page there and you can um say I I love love I love I love this book. I, I like it. Like. Um if you have a student who's um using three words regularly, well then you can sort of play around a little bit more and model I like this book. book. Um and maybe I'll add a describing word. It's really funny. It's funny. I like books funny. So notice like I'm saying whole sentences, but I'm only modeling at the level of the of the child. Sorry. Um, so just to give you a second to look um, ideas for modeling in red is what you might say. And then what's in all caps is what you could model on the device. Okay. okay, and before we 
we're gonna go through these really quickly yeah any questions about modeling or the these slides that i just showed you if you can just um speak out because our our moderators had to go charge <laughs> <laughs> we're here we're here i don't oh, see anything yeah. with... <laughs> we had to switch <laughs> places i don't see anybody's hands raised okay um, there were a couple of questions, but I think maybe let's, is it okay if we chat about um, the program and then we'll yeah. leave five minutes at the end for, for questions, five, 10 minutes? Definitely. And you'll have, we'll make sure you have these slides so you'll have all these links, but th this is just a, a deeper dive into more AAC strategies. So wait time, following lead, customizing the system making sure it's always available, descriptive teaching, recasting, shared reading with the devices, presuming competence, honoring all forms of communication. We did that. Um, I, I briefly talked about this. This is an important one, just making sure that you're connecting um, and not only using the device during academics, resources, um, just to get you familiar, many of you probably already know these. These are the most common apps in SFUSD. Okay, um, language systems first program is something new this year. Um, it's for students in identified special day classes. I'm not gonna remember them all off the top of my head. Star, Paul, King, Star King, Paul Revere, Preschool, Bratton, um, preschool and K2 and Glen Park. I think, so. I think, that's, I think that's all. We did not choose these schools. No. Um, they were chosen by some by administrators and they're all um, autism focused mod severe special day classes. And so every single student so in those classes will have a AAC device dedicated to them and the teacher will have one also. The devices will all have, will all be set up with touch chat word power 60. Um, that can be changed within touch chat. Like if you, if a student needs a different page set, I don't know how familiar, 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 familiar you all are with touch chat. We can show you a little bit, but, um, and then if a student is not able to access touch chat with word power, it's not the right app, then obviously they would get something different, but every student will have access to touch chat in these classrooms. Uh, as part of the program, the AAC support SLPs will be assigned to these classrooms to provide consistent and ongoing trainings. Um, which may include, but not limited to what I have listed here. Okay. There will be parent trainings on Zoom at least three times per year live, but if that's not accessible to families and they will also be offered asynchronously. And we're hoping to have um, these trainings available in English, Spanish, Spanish and Mandarin. I don't know if that's been confirmed yet. I think Diana and Yana. And, okay. <clears throat> and there will also be um, trainings at the school site for staff and um, social hours with staff to sort of help everybody get more acquainted with the devices and fluent in, in using them. There's a question in the chat. Is Touch Chat on Clutter? Um, unfortunately, it's not. It's only available on iPads. Um, and it's pretty expensive, so I wouldn't recommend downloading it yourself um, unless you wanted to get the free version, which doesn't have voice output, but you could still use it to model for your students or to learn the, learn the app and the location of the words. Um, and then before we do, if there's any questions, I, we just also wanted to talk about the S10A. Oh, did I? Can you hear me? 
-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we also just wanted to talk about the S10A classification. Um, and so if there, if you're a paraeducator who's working in classrooms with AAC users, you, you should have the S10A classification, um, which gives a, a pay raise. And so this is how you would get that classification. Um, you would attend a virtual AAC training which you just did. Right. <laughs> um, and then you would complete a, a quiz and the quiz can be taken as many times as needed to get the 80% uh, score. It's a 10 question quiz. And then um, that would be submitted to your principal who would contact HR. If I work in various schools, for example, um, do they have a list of schools where the S10A ed paraeducator, um, which schools uh, have these people there? Or do I need to tell HR about my interest in being an S10A paraeducator? No, so you you completed an AAC training just by like by coming to, to this. And so, yeah. so that you can take the quiz okay and as long and, and again you can the quiz you can take it as, as there's no limit to how many times you could take the quiz you just need to get the 80 percent uh -huh. and and that's submitted to the a site principal just a disclaimer mm -hmm. um we are working really hard on this but not every Every principal seems to be fully aware, like Gene Robertson is in agreement with the process. It's just, we're still working out the final kinks of making sure the principals all know what, how to contact HR, mm -hmm. but um, you guys have come to this and then the quiz, we'll just make sure everyone gets sent the quiz, everyone mm -hmm. that was here today. Um, and then that'll be something you can present to your principal. And Jean Robertson said she would let all the principals know this is how things are working. So, you know, there's a few little district, um, you know, things that are still not quite hundred percent clear to everyone, but it is, it is, this is going to be the process. Okay. And okay. So you guys will send us the quiz. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make sure that you have, we have um, two emails associated with our team. Um, uh, Molly, have you put the emails in the chat yet? Um, I'll do that right now. Cool. Um, oh, one of them's here. So one of them's right here. That's Attic. And then we have a um, like an AAC team email as as well that Molly is putting in the chat. And so we will follow up today or, to, or with this week with the presentation and the um, quiz. But that's how you can contact us. Okay. It's not a really long quiz no. either. Okay, should we put our um, email addresses in the chat? Um, so you know who to send no, it to? No, we'll... Um, um, participants are listed Yeah, there. we'll... We know who you are. Okay, <laughs> okay and this, that's fine. This uh, is saved. I'm going to save it right now. Okay, we're going to save all your names, make sure. Um, but are there any um, questions about the language systems first program um, or anything? Um, is there like a um, so I know the pay the pay is some questions for some people, but is that like increased? I'm just curious how that works. Um, for the S10A uh, mm -hmm. designation, there is a pay increase. I um, I don't know what it is. I don't, know, I don't know exactly what it is, but okay, no worries. Just I guess HR can let me know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Mary. I think I think having students that you currently work with is part of the criteria of mm -hmm. getting the A designation, but I'm not sure. Um, yes, it's something that you'd have to ask. Your, um, it's a complicated question. Your supervisor, yeah. I hope that it's going, going to be clearer. Elementary school, PC class. Do you have that set in your list? It's 
I don't believe it's on the on the list um, unless it's a mod severe autism focused classroom then it would be on the list all of the mod severe autism focused SDC classrooms are on the list as well as several preschool SDCs mm -hmm. um, next steps to help parents to gain s10 status talk to that um, speech therapist at your school site and we'll be in contact with you especially Kathy because your um, classroom is is participating in the program um, and so we're hoping that that administrators are already ironing out um, how to get your paras um, classification changed. Um, but it would be to talk with the SLP at your school site um, or to reach out to the AAC team. Okay, thank you. Um, Jennifer Hotran said, do we have to work with students that need AAC to take the AAC certificate. No, it, you. I mean, you can just if you like AAC, you can, you can always come and learn about it. But I don't know if um, HR will will. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, we're not HR people. We're just um, doing the training, so that would be a question for them <laughs> um, and your supervisor. Um, sorry uh, if if that's a disappointing answer geez. for everybody. I'll make sure everyone knows it's going. Um, Ms. Juliet said you can look in the contract for S10A to give you a general idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. So if the school is on your list, the paras will be sent information. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we are, we are anticipating that the information will be shared with the paras that are participating in the program yes, for sir. sure. Yeah. And if you don't, then you should email, email our email. Yeah, anyway, sorry. So the quiz is sent before school starts. That is also a very good question. Um, but we don't quite have the answer to. Aren't we doing the parent institute? We, the, oh, yeah. Okay, so we, I think we didn't anticipate so many parents to be on this, this um, Zoom either. So it's really great that we're, there's a presentation um, on Friday um, okay. for the Para Institute. Um, so um, it would be great if all the if, if you're participating in the program, if you could attend that session. Um, and That's then where the quiz is. I think the quiz, the quiz is given after I think, that. Yeah, I think that um, we, we don't have the final decision making um, power to determine that so it's hard for us to say we don't quite know yet but and sorry to leave you hanging I want but you will get it, it. yeah everybody um, else yeah that's okay yeah that's fine thanks you're leaving the presentation um we, we should all be there we should be there friday um jerry touche uh will be leading it friday i'll be assisting and i think the rest of us are you guys going to be there yeah yes sure. We're all going to be there, and Jerry, uh, Tush, another SLP, is going to be there. So um, we're just thrilled that you're also, um, you know, interested and supportive of your students. So it makes all the difference because really we're on the outside circle when it comes to like if you look at how close you guys are to the students as opposed to us. You're with them all day long. And it's a long school day, and so it's really important that, um, and you know that 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 you know all about this stuff, and you're able to model and uh, you know parents and what happens at home. You know, we really I know that Jamie, everybody on the team is very um, passionate about parent training and parent involvement, and it's a very very important aspect of, of what we do and what and how a student does with their device how it's in how it's interpreted or how it's um you know at home and how it's um is it a part of their lives you know is, is it supported is it encouraged we want you know i always um i've heard this story we want our students not leave home without their talker if they go to a birthday party they go um to the park or anywhere. We want them to like it so much and to rely on it so much that it's such a part of their life. Um, because it communication is 
is really so much, everything, really um, the connection. I finally, I was losing a little bit of hope on this one and, uh, transition program. And he finally got to the point where his mother called me and she's like, anywhere without it. Um, then he went on a trip to the beach. He took it to the door. He took it everywhere. He went. Um, and so that's, that's our goal. If people, if the students want, I know that somebody said, sometimes parents say that they, um, they want their student to have the device with them all the time. We want the student to ha to want to have the device with them all the time. Um, well, we don't want it, we can't force it on a student, but um, we want them to see it as like a friend to them. So. And all paras are welcome to come to the attic. It's open to paras and teachers, uh, other service providers. We can come and make materials or explore materials. We're not always there, but sometimes there are SLPs there or one of the answer questions. Um, the attic coordinator is also really knowledgeable. Her name is Carolyn. Um, are we going to get booted right. off? Does anybody else have any more questions? Is it too? Well, I just want to make a comment that it's, yeah, I appreciate that you guys offer support because sometimes on campus or on site, um, you know, the, the specialist and other people just don't have time to kind of uh, work with me. Uh, uh, they just expect me to just know it and they give instructions, but um, not to the detail that would be helpful for me for that particular student during the day. So it's also just, you know, kind of, um, so the background education, like, you know, the workshop today is helpful because um, I can just go in there and hit the ground running and, and I mean, of course, get some of the, the teacher's input based on their situation, but uh, lo and behold, I mean, they expect parents to just kind of know it, you know, and so, but sometimes we don't. And so um, this helps a lot. I, we were planning on um, playing around with touch chat a little bit. So I'd still like to offer that um, for those of you who want to stick around. Um, we can, I can pull it up big on the screen and kind of just go over how it's it's laid out, how it's organized. We could do the head tracker. Um, I can pull that modeling screen back up and kind of show you what the what the model would look like. Um, so, but are there any other um, questions before we get into that or anything else you want to talk about? Nicole, I yeah. sold past a, kid. a couple. Um, um, let's see. Um, would this be helpful helpful for using with newcomers? So like kids learning English. Any AC visual supports could always be helpful. Um, oh, I see. Wait, why are we echoey? Sorry. Um, can you can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. I think visual supports um, are ve very helpful for new for newcomers. I don't know um that a dedicated AAC device would be appropriate for a student who um is just a, a, a second language learner but I'm curious what my colleagues have to say too about that I yeah I don't know about a dedicated device with voice output but um it might be helpful to use low tech we do have uh, we have a core board with um Chinese characters, you know, I think that's like a 90 word core board. Um, that might be a little helpful if the student is literate. And then we have some Spanish and, you know, anything for the newcomers that could help them um, just feel more comfortable, you know, almost like a book with um, book, a bilingual book with pictures. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't think we, we, we wouldn't recommend that 
as you know a high tech device for a newcomer because it's a different need. It's a need to learn a new language versus um, a difficulty using spoken language effectively. You know, unless it was a newcomer who also needed AAC, you right. know, there's definitely going to be some newcomers like that. And we do have many apps that 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 we can um, program to be bilingual, so that is an option. Uh, another question we have was, when students who don't have an AAC device are interested in another student's AAC device, what is their exploration? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm sure we have all. If the kid is okay with it. I mean, I'd be careful about that, though. Limit the amount of time. Limit the amount of time. Make sure that it's not blocking access for the AAC user in any way. Offer an alternative. And they're communicating together using the AAC user's device, then it could be beneficial because then, you know, they, it's sort of like, like they're doing a language stimulation kind of together and, and they're sharing a mode of communication. So it, it, it would depend. I mean, you really have to just make sure that it's not blocking access for the AAC user. Mm -hmm. So like if they want to say something, the other student isn't, you know, holding their, their way of communicating. I think that was all the questions in the chat. Um, I think so. If there are any more, call them out. Oh, do we do we recommend a child carry their AAC device all the time? I work with children whose parents wanted them to we have it all the time. We talked about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean they should. The AAC device should be on and within an arm's reach at all times. If different kids have different goals, if the kids can, you know, are ready to be carrying it all the time, um, that's individual. But um, yeah, they should. They should have their, um, if they're not able to communicate with spoken words, in all contexts, even outside in the playground, in the bathroom, in the library, in the science room, in the gymnasium, even walking to the bus, um, because you communicate in all those different settings. Um, and if they don't have their robust language system robust meaning all of the words that they could want to say then um, you know that's breaking one of their rights. I think that's all the questions and if anybody. Into the touch chat. Oh, one more what advice would you give to your younger self oh no <laughs> and what you wish you knew. What a good question. That's a great question. What would you, what well, would you I'm a lot older than everybody. So what I would give to my younger self was to do more aided language stimulation. Yeah, less hand over hand. I did that um, when um, like PEX was the thing to do. Then a lot of uh, uh, prompting for I wants and more as a default and in repetition, not using as much variety with kids because I thought they needed to hear the same sentence structure and words over and over and over and over again. Um, and that's just, it's not fair to kids. They need to learn a lot more than just, I want and my turn, please. I'm not in the safety, is anybody in the safety training tomorrow? I think that's the BCBAs. Hey, Nicole. I think they're trying to um, screen share the touch chat app. Similar to what Molly said, I think I would just focus a lot more on on connection and mm -hmm. modeling and not worry so much about 
like and like I think before it was syntax and like answering questions correctly and when I was new, you know, but now it's that's like the least of my priorities. I'm trying to um, share my screen for uh, touch chat, but I can't it's, it's resisting. Yeah, it's not letting me join my oh. wife. So does anybody else have any questions while we're waiting for this to go through? Roxanne, thank you. Yeah. Roxanne thanks for that. Um, yeah. Talk with your speech therapist and and some of us can um, can come out to your to your class and we can we can help you. That's what we're here for. Spread the word. We're here to help. I had a question about um, the um, S10A. Um, should we just work in the 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 area where we are assigned to until until the the quiz is over and we hand it to the um, principal and then it, once the HR uh, approves of it, then we switch over to the S10A. I think your job, are you in a, a special day class? Uh, or? Um, I'm not sure. Well, I can either work in a special day class or one on one with someone in a regular classroom. Oh, so you're working with, I think if you're working with students who have any students with um, AAC or assistive technology, and then you finish the quiz, then you would send that to, to your um, administrator. And I think you'd CC your speech therapist and teacher or, or um, the attic. What, um, one of our emails, you know, just so we can confirm that you did the training. Um, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Totally high. We're, we're still a little fuzzy on the S10A. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting it approved. So um, okay. we want to support you though. Reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Pear Institute is on Friday. I think that's when you're going to be taking the quiz and that that gives the green light to getting the S10A. Um, yet you had the S10A training. And if you're working with a student, there should be no reason that you don't don't receive that. Yeah, there should be no reason. Okay. So, okay. And, um, and, uh, and I should just email attic, right? Okay. You can email yeah. attic and I would definitely work with my principal mm -hmm. and um, an HR an HR about it. Okay. So I, I believe the principal really has a lot to do with it. I think so too. Okay. Yeah. Do you go? Do you, Nicole and Jamie? Do you agree with that? Yes. Oh, and uh -huh. the uh, human resources have a lot to do with the S ten A designation, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to us. Like we can say yes, they passed. Right. Yeah. But, but we're still a little fuzzy on the process. Well, I think also ask your um, site um, union. If you didn't get the slides, if you couldn't find them, just please write your email in the chat and we can send it to you after mm -hmm. this is over. Um, I finally got touch chat up. It's going very slowly. So um, whoever wants to stick around for a few minutes, if you want to lay out of the app, please feel free. But I also know we're only supposed to go to 245. So um, if you need to go, then you should do that. But thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. A big hello to Gloria Flores out there. If you're still there. Hi, friends. Thanks for what you do.
Hello, Makayla. So happy to see you. Hello. We, we... I'm having problems with my device. I think I'm having hard times listening to you. Okay, who, who's who's all right? I think I can get this one. There's some people still here, so I'm just going to talk about touch chat, but feel free to, you, you can leave, don't feel bad. <laughs> There's just still some people here, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, so this is, this is the word power 60 basics. So if you're part of the language systems first program, this is how the iPads will look on this, um, on this setup. This is the home screen. Um, touch chat has many different page sets within the app they have um the, the 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 basic organization is the same but the amount of icons changes so there's like a 20 a 42 a 48 a 60 an 80 a 108 i think there's like 140 something um we can set the touch chat up to be bilingual english spanish um and so it's pretty self-explanatory how it's organized. Um, just like with any AAC app, you really need to get in there and poke around yourself to really feel comfortable. But if you're looking at the home screen here, um, the it's color coded to a bit. So the yellow words are pronoun and people words. Uh, green are action words, verbs. Uh, blue is like preposition location words. When you see the little arrow in the corner, like eat, that means that that page opens up. Um, I will try to show you, but it's going really slowly. Um, and so eat will open up to, hopefully you'll see in a minute, up top where every, while well, we wait for that, up top where everything's all in caps, all of those are, are category pages. So you open up questions or social or places or time or groups, more um, words will come up there. And you know what? I'm just going to hold this thing up mm -hmm. because here, can I pin myself? Well, I'm just going to, um, am I, I'm not pinned, am I? Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. So what I was trying to show you is when you hit eat, it opens up to this page here. That's, that's just associated with vocabulary having to do with eating. If you press I, some associated verbs will come up here. Um, so like smell. smell. You could you could press smell. I smell pizza. pizza. Um, up here, what I was talking about, all these categories open up. So let's hit social, a bunch of pre-programmed messages um, or single word messages with which some social vocabulary are on there, personal uh, information and questions. So you could program these for all the kids. My name is Nicole. What's your name? I live in Oakland. Where do you live? Um, I go to school at Sanchez Elementary School. Where do you go to school? So you can just try kind of help support them um, and having those types of conversations. Uh, groups opens up. This is where like all of your noun vocabulary is in groups. If you can't find a word, you can always go to that. Um, sorry, you couldn't see what I did there. You go to the key up top, and there is this find word button down there. You press that. You can type in a word. Say you're looking for the word park, P-A-R-K, find, and then it'll show you the pathways to park. And, and sometimes in this app, there's more than one. And so you pick one and then it'll lead you through how to get to that word. Um, Pets chat comes with features for our kids who might need different access issues. So you can use uh, dwell features to make the, so you have to hold down the button a little bit for our kids who have some fine motor issues um, or they get a little 
uh, sappy and they need they need that extra input to hold down a button. This is also where you find the head tracking. This is all in settings. And if you're interested in learning more about this, um, this will yeah. yeah, this will all be included if you're in, if you're part of that language systems first program. Um, if you're not and you're interested in all of this stuff, you can um, email us or talk to your SLP. They might know. And if they don't know, they can fill out our AAC support form. And um, we're always happy to do trainings. We're we prefer included, to do them in person. I think, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, that's in person. Um, anything else about touch chat? Um, Oh, if you have, if you have students who are working on, um, who are, are writers or working more on um, higher level language, there are uh, ways to work on tenses. So like if you hit eat, eat um, you can see the past tense will, will come up here and the present progressive will come here and the plural S will be there. The third person S will be there. Um, so those features are built in. Um, Customizing. Oh yeah, you can customize any. So very, very easy to customize. Um, for example, um, oh, here's an example of, uh, you can see, so there are some names written in here. You can also add their pictures, um, like their real pictures. Um, that's easy to do. So a lot of kids um, have like their, um, Movies. yeah, this page will, will have all of their favorite stuff to watch on there, their music page. You made me think of something else. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Well, then I will stop. But if you want to know more, email us. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Sorry, we are. Delinquent. Sorry, it was Dan telling us to get off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I don't think we need anybody. We got everybody's emails. Cool. Oh, Floris G. Floris G. I'm so happy to see you, Michaela. Oh. Floris G. Floris G. Floris G. Floris G. Floris G. Floris G. Okay. The last people are up. And.